In this video, we're going to be viewing some of the toy carnivores featuring the Carnotaurus, the Suchomimus, which I made a mistake in calling the Baryonyx in the last video, the T-Rex, the Mosasaurus, and only a few others. I had some toys from the Lost World line, including this one that I still have to this day, and as well as this guy, he was one of my favorite toys to play with, and a pair of fighting velociraptors that you clicked on the end of this long device with a swivel wheel to fight against your friends. Whichever raptor got hit in the chest is the one that got launched off its pad and defeated. That was the equivalent of Super Smash Brothers. And here are some others. So, this was a very bad version of the Spinosaurus, by the way. Looked more like Dime, uh, Dime Tradon to me, but whatever. <laughs> so, these were the last toys that I had from the Jurassic Park line, and so I can see such an improvement in advancement since then. Taking a look at the Carnotaurus, it looks very much like its real-life counterpart. Its arms are kind of placed funny, like its chest is giving birth to a raw whole chicken or something. But the structure of it looks sound, and there are a lot of moving parts, which is always fun. The Suchomimus has a sound structure as well, and I guess it put me off as being the Suchomimus until I saw the enlarged claw. I honestly don't care for this model because, first of all, it's way too colorful. The colors seem to clash, and I don't particularly dig the short sail on its back. Also, it's a little bit annoying that the animal's body color transcends onto its claws. I think the makers were a little bit lazy in that they could have taken the extra time to color the claws black. This blue model, I feel, could have had a little bit more work done on it as well. With Blue as a very major character, it seems as though most of the details should be placed on her. A pet peeve of mine is just that the claws match the color of the body. Most claws in real reality are either white, yellow, or a blackish color, and often contrast nicely with the overall color scheme of their possessor. Even the striped down Blue's flank, it feels a little bit drab in my opinion. The Dilophosaurus looks cool. The bright, oversaturated color makes the dinosaurs kind of look like Nickelodeon characters. So I don't really dig the whole greenish blue. The overall structural design of the di dinosaur is cool and although it does look good in terms of its skull structure and everything, uh, I feel as though it's a bit nauseating to look at in my opinion. I do enjoy the color around its eyes and the darkness outlining the red. The frills look like they can move back and forth which I think is very unique to the dinosaur, so it's good that they included that. I honestly enjoyed my Dilophosaurus toy that I showed you earlier on in the video that could squirt actual water. Pretty good distance, might I add. The Hararosaurus for me is a new type of dinosaur. I'm still learning about so many more, but it's interesting to see this toy on the line. Could we possibly see it in Fallen Kingdom, and what role would it play if so? I could see this being a sinister character, but I could also imagine there not being much more room for other villainous dinosaurs in Fallen Kingdom. It played an important part in the Telltale Jurassic Park game, so I have my hopes up that it might play a part in future films. Maybe that can be safe for Jurassic World 3. As for the coloration on this toy, I think it's okay, but the Hararosaurus, I feel, structure-wise, is a bit too fat. As for the Mosasaurus, I think that it's one of the only toy models on this line that look the most realistic, or at least the most like its film counterpart. If I were playing with this, I would believe I was seeing the Mosasaurus from the actual movie. It's great that its jaw also moves up and down so that it can clamp onto other toys and drag them into the deep. As for the Allosaurus, taking a closer look at this dinosaur, it actually really does look like the dinosaur from the trailer. The coloration and how its teeth look when its jaw is open resemble the trailer dinosaur. Its eyes look amazing, and even though there is a little bit of bleeding from the paint on the bottom jaw for the teeth, and a little bit too much of a thick coating on the top teeth, the tongue articulation looks amazing, and really makes me feel like I'm looking at a dinosaur frozen in time roaring. Okay, so the last toy we're going to look at in this video is the Baryonyx. Like the Allosaurus, the Baryonyx also makes noise and it has that tip of the tongue upturned to emulate what a dinosaur's open roaring mouth would look like. I love the color on this dinosaur. See, you can have darker colors that contrast well. I don't know what happened with Blue's model, but they nailed it on the Baryonyx. The ridges on its dorsal are well articulated, and I feel like a lot of work went into this model. The color, the grooves on its skin, everything, except, <laughs> except the naked claw colors. They need to put some color on them claws. 
This would honestly drive me nuts. On some toys, I can ignore it, but being that I pay more attention to detail, especially on main characters, I would have to paint them myself. I used to do that anyway. Whenever I would get a dinosaur toy or a car, I would always do a little bit of a touch up on the paint job to customize them to my liking or to make them look more sinister or badass. Anyway, that's it for the featurettes in this video, at least as far as the carnivores go. Um, there's a lot more that are included, but so far, which toys are your favorite or which would you definitely throw your money at in a heartbeat? Mine would have to be those Battle Raptor Kamigamis. You can click on the outro video thumbnail to check out the videos that we did on those. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This has been Altiori. You ask, we answer.